let's look at the next question now it says that sometimes when there are major earthquakes that destroy large areas of property congress will appropriate disaster relief funds for rebuilding the damaged property including private homes so whenever there is a major earthquake that happens uh, in that area congress will appropriate disaster relief funds for rebuilding the damaged property these appropriations while well intentioned a bad policy for the nation because they encourage irresponsible behavior now although the disaster relief which the intention is good but they are bad for the nation because they encourage irresponsible behavior as long as citizens know that they will be compensated for the loss of their homes in the event of an earthquake they will feel free to build their homes in areas where earthquakes occur and the rest of society will have to bear the burden for their responsibility now the question here says that whenever there is an earthquake that that occurs the congress which is uh, i'm assuming it's a government in that case the government will appropriate disaster relief to that area now these disaster relief uh, rationing the appropriations uh, although happen with a very good intention but they kind of uh, are bad for the nation because they encourage irresponsible behavior now as long as the citizens and and why does the author say that because it he clearly says that as long as the citizens know that they will be compensated for the loss of their homes in the event of an earthquake they will feel free to build their homes in areas where earthquakes occur so the author's argument is since the people would know that the government compensates for the loss due to earthquake they will deliberately build their houses in areas where earthquakes occur and the rest of the society will have to bear the burden for this responsibility so what is the irresponsibility that we are referring to is the fact that citizens will build their homes in areas where the earthquake occurs now the question says the argument above relies on which of the following assumptions and what is the argument that the appropriations although well intentioned are bad policy for the nation because they encourage irresponsible behavior and that's the assumption let's look at the first option which says homeowners can determine whether particular areas are likely to experience earthquakes now this is a good argument it says home home owners which means the ones who are building their homes they can determine whether particular areas are likely to experience earthquakes so if they can determine if whether an area is likely to have earthquake or not it makes that would be an assumption because the author is stating that they will feel free to build their homes in areas where earthquake occur so if they can determine where earthquakes can occur they will build their houses and therefore the, the the government will give them compensation on that and this could be the irresponsibility that the author is referring to this should be the answer in all likelihood let's look at the other options it says that it is possible to build homes that are more resistant to build homes that are more resistant to earthquakes and that's not the point of your passage and that's gone c says it is responsible to the government to compensate citizens for loss due to natural disasters now do i know whether is is the whole passage talking about all the natural disasters or is it only referring to earthquakes since the focus of the question is only on earthquakes and not on all the natural disasters therefore this option is a generic option so i'll mark it as a g and this will be eliminated insurance companies will not insure homes and this is out of my scope so that's gone d while homes can be rebuilt there is no way to compensate people for the loss of relatives loss of relatives or pets is not in my scope and eliminated and e is also gone the answer is definitely a i hope this question was clear we understood the argument and then we tried to figure out the assumptions from the given options answer a seems to be the right answer let's go to the next question now it says that civil trials often involve great complexities that are beyond the cap capacities of jurors to understand now jurors is nothing but a jury as a result jurors decision in such trials are frequently incorrect so the decision of the jury is frequently incorrect justice would therefore be better served if the more complex trials were decided by judges rather than juries now the question is pretty clear it says that the civil trials often involve great complexity and these great complexity are beyond the capacity of jury to understand and as a result lot of these juries when they make decisions for these trials are frequently incorrect which means they are not they are not giving the right decisions so as a result the conclusion here as per the author says that justice would therefore be better served if more complex trials were decided by judges rather than juries 
Now the question is the argument above depends on which of the following assumptions. First one says a majority of civil trials involve complexities that are not capable of that the jury is not capable of understanding. This could be an assumption because it clearly states that the majority of civil trials involves a majority of civil trials involve complexities that jury are not capable of understanding. This could be an assumption. Let's move to the next one. The judges who would decide complex civil trials would be better able to understand the complexities of those trials than juries are. Now this as compared to A is a slightly better answer because A is only restricted to civil trials, is only restricted to the jury, doesn't really talk about from a point of view of judges. B on the other hand says the judges who would decide complex civil trials would be better able to understand and if that's the, if they are better, better able to understand it would automatically mean that their decisions will be better and therefore correct. And this should be the assumption. Let's look at C. The judges who would preside over civil trials would disallow the most complex sorts of evidence from being introduced into those trials. Would disallow the most complex sort of evidence. This you don't know. So it's an unknown. So that's gone. Jury's decisions are frequently incorrect even in those civil trials that do not involve great complexity. So that's talking about a case which is not in the scope of the passage. So that's gone. The sole reason in favor of having juries decide is the supposition that the decisions will almost always be. Now, whether this we don't know, so that's an unknown. I'll mark it as a U and that's gone. So the answer definitely will be B, which says the judges who would decide complex civil trials would be able better able to understand the complexities of those trials than juries would. I hope this is clear. Let's move to the next question. Now it says a famous singer recently won a lawsuit against an advertising firm. For using another singer in a commercial to evoke the famous singer well-known rendition of a certain song. As a result of the lawsuit, advertising firms will stop using imitators in commercials. Therefore, advertising costs will rise since famous singers' services cost more than those of their imitators. Now, the question has, says that a famous singer recently won a lawsuit against an advertising firm for using another singer in a commercial to evoke the famous singer well-known rendition. So, let's say a singer who sang a very famous song. Instead of showing him, another singer was shown to create his same rendition. As a result of the lawsuit now, the advertising firm will stop using imitators. Imitators here refers to the people who pose themselves as celebrities, but in reality they are not, in commercials. Therefore, advertising costs will rise. Why is the author saying that? Because famous singers' services cost is more than those of their imitators. And since the advertising firms will stop using imitators, there is all the more chance that famous singers will be hired for their service. The conclusion is based on which of the following assumption. Most people are unable to distinguish, unable to distinguish, if you are unable to distinguish then you will not pay more. So that's gone. Commercials using famous singers are usually more effective than commercial using imitators. Whether it is effective or not, that's not the point that we are discussing. So that's gone. The original versions of some well-known songs are available, unavailable for use. That's again not the point to check. Advertising firms will continue to use imitators to mimic the physical mannerisms. Again, is physical mannerisms the point that we have discussed? No. The advertising industry will use well-known renditions of songs. And this has to be the assumption because if you assume that the industry is going to continue using the, the, the famous renditions, then the famous singers have to be hired and therefore their costs will definitely go up. And that's the assumption on which your conclusion that advertising costs will rise is based upon. I hope this is clear. Let's move on to the next topic question. Now it says that one of the most notorious performance enhancing drugs is stanozolol, an anabolic steroid found in mainly many dietary supplements used by athletes and bodybuilders. Because of the drug's notoriety, the governing bodies of all major sports competitions routinely test for its presence in athletes bloodstream and consider it as banned such. So what the question is saying is that uh, there is a component, uh, there is a notorious performance enhancing drug which is called stanozolol and this is found in many dietary supplements of the athletes and bodybuilders. Because of the way the drug behaves, the government has banned this drug in all major sports and typically all tests routinely test its presence in athletes. Uh, bloodstream and considers it as a banned substance. LMG, a new exercise supplement is promoted to athletes as being completely free of stanozolol. So the question also talks about another supplement which is called LMG but this is devoid of this uh, performance enhancing drug. For this reason, athletes whose only dietary supplement is LMG do not have to worry about testing positive for stanozolol. That's your conclusion of this statement.
which of the following is an assumption required by the argument and this is the argument that for this reason athletes whose only dietary supplement is lmg do not have to worry about testing positive for stanzilla what's my assumption in this lmg does not contain any anabolic steroids other than stanozolol so if it is containing stanozolol then it's a point of worry so that's not the assumption despite not including stanozolol lmg is as effective as other favored by athletes i don't know what other supplements not talked about gone stanozolol is not naturally present in foods commonly consumed by athletes and this has to be the right assumption because if you're giving lmg to them you're assuming that lmg does not have uh, uh, stanozolol which is harmful for the athletes therefore the assumption is stanozolol is not naturally present in foods commonly consumed by athletes and this has to be the right answer in all possibilities this has to be the right answer lmg does not lead to dangerous side effects so side effects is not a point of your consideration lmg is not currently considered a banned substance so that is anti what the author is saying so that's gone so answer has to be c that stanozolol is not naturally present in foods commonly consumed by athletes i hope this is clear let's go to the next question let's look at the next question and it says that many people argue that tobacco advertising plays a crucial role in causing teenagers to start or continue smoking so what is the author attributing the point of smoking is tobacco advertising so that's the attribution point in norway however where there has been a ban on tobacco advertising so first what is the author doing is giving you the role of tobacco advertising which has a crucial role in causing the teenagers to start or continue smoking now in norway where there has been a ban on this tobacco advertising since 1975 smoking is at least as prevalent among teenagers as it is in countries that do not ban such advertising and 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 this point that in spite of the ban smoking is still as uh, prevalent among teenagers as it is in countries that do not ban advertising is the whole paradox that we are referring to here which of the following statement draws the most reliable conclusion from the information above i hope the question was clear the whole point of tobacco advertising is to stop teenagers uh, to continue smoking but uh, sorry the whole point of tobacco advertising is to encourage teenagers to uh, start or continue smoking but in norway when there was a complete ban in 1975 ideal, ideally the situation should have been that uh, teenagers have reduced smoking or the number of teenagers who are smoking should have reduced but smoking is at least as prevalent among teenagers as it is in countries that do not ban such advertising so which means the intent or the whole purpose of banning the tobacco advertising did not take its shape in norway in 1975 and smoking continued to be as prevalent so which of the following conclusions can you most reliably draw the first one says tobacco advertising cannot be the only factor that affects the prevalence of smoking among teenagers and that that this has to be a very strong conclusion that in spite of, if ban equaled uh consumption of uh, tobacco the ban if ban equaled the stoppage of tobacco then 1975 post 1975 uh, teenagers shouldn't have smoked which means tobacco advertising is not the only factor which means there are other factors which affects the prevalence of smoking among teenagers so this should be the right answer right now let's look at the other options advertising does not play a role so if it doesn't play a role then to start or continue smoking then that kind of goes opposite to what the statement is saying and hence this can't be the conclusion banning tobacco does not reduce the consumption of tobacco the consumption of tobacco is not even uh, the point consumption of tobacco with respect to teenagers um, is the point here so that's pretty generic so that's gone more teenagers smoke if they are not exposed to tobacco advertising than if they are and this is something which you don't know more teenagers smoke if they are not exposed to tobacco so this is you don't know and since you do not know this this will fall under unknown category and will eliminate it most teenagers who smoked in 1975 did not stop when the ban was implemented and that's exactly the whole point that did not stop but what is the most reliable conclusion that you can draw and It, it it's a possibility that most teenagers who smoked did not stop or maybe the ban was implemented and more teenagers started joining in so you do not know whether they did not stop was the reason or did more people join in so although this might look like one of the answers but definitely the wrong answer e the answer has to be a when you say that the most reliable conclusion is the fact that tobacco advertising cannot be the only factor that affects the prevalence of smoking among teenagers 
And since it's not one of the factors, uh, there would be other factors which would have left, led to the fact that smoking was still prevalent after the ban. I hope this was clear. Let's move on to the last question. Now it says nearly one in three subscribers to financial forecaster is a millionaire and over half are in top management. Shouldn't you subscribe to financial forecaster now? A reader who is neither a millionaire nor in the top management would most likely to act in accordance with the advertisement's suggestion if he or she drew which are the following questionable conclusions invited by the advertisement. So what the question tells you is that there's an advertisement which says that nearly one in three subscribers to financial forecaster is a millionaire and over half are in the top management. Shouldn't you subscribe to financial forecaster now, which is the magazine? Now the question says a reader who's neither a millionaire nor in the top management would most likely to act in accordance with the advertisement suggestion. What's the suggestion that you, when you subscribe, you become a millionaire. That's, that's typically the point that's drawn here. If he or she drew which of the following questionable conclusion. So which conclusion is someone most likely to draw if someone were to act in accordance to this advertisement? Let's look at the first option. It says among finance related periodicals, Financial forecaster provides the most detailed information. Is my financial information the point of entry to buying this? No. Top managers cannot do their jobs properly without reading financial forecaster. And this is top managers is not even in your consideration. So that's gone. The advertisement is placed where those who will be likely to read it are millionaires. The advertisement is placed where those who will likely to read are millionaires, which means the, it is the people who are reading it are already millionaires which is outside the scope because the question tells you that a reader is neither a millionaire nor a top management so c is also gone the subscribers mentioned were helped to become millionaires or join top management by reading financial forecaster and this if if this is what somebody understands that if uh, if somebody joins financial forecaster he will be helped to become the millionaire or joint top management he or she is most likely to subscribe to financial forecaster and that's the questionable conclusion that somebody might draw and hence the answer. E says only those who will in fact become millionaires will read the advertisement and that's, that's the other way around. So it is the opposite. So um, this is the opposite. So eliminated. E is gone. Answer is D. I hope this was clear. That brings me to the end of this chapter. I hope uh, we have covered uh, enough questions in this addi additional practice question series. Uh, remember, even before you come to these additional practice questions, please go through the concept videos. They are a must because they uh, deal in they deal in concepts in a great uh, detail and also helps you to uh, get into more uh, uh, clearer understanding of how to of these questions. Hope to see in the remaining videos. Thank you so much for your time.